My name's Daniel Roy, and today I'm going to be doing all of your, uh, super creative, always great, never terrible, definitely way better than mine, magic trick ideas. So here's the background. I make videos that are about 10 levels of a thing. 10 levels of sleight of hand, 10 levels of three card Monty, 10 levels of finding the aces. In the comment sections for these videos, people often suggest what the 11th level should be. These comment sections are a gold mine, really bucking the trend that the YouTube comment sections are terrible. They're pretty funny, they're very wholesome, lots of interesting, um, creative ideas there. So I figured that as a challenge, I would try to do some of the magic tricks from those comment sections. Now, most of these comments concern the 10 levels of sleight of hand video. And if you haven't seen that video, I will get you up to speed. Throughout the video, I use four cards in particular, which just happen to be the four aces. Now, the most common suggestion was that for level 11, I should have two ace of spades, or five aces, or 10 aces, or 52 aces. Level 11 would be like, as you can see, I now have two ace of spades. Level 11, and as you can see, I now have five aces. Level 11, as you can see, now I've created a different deck of cards out of the old deck of cards, and I gave myself all eight aces, whatever that heck that means. Level 11, the entire deck is made of 52 aces. Now, however much I appreciate the friendly advice, there is a problem with all of these suggestions. And in order to explain that problem, I need to recreate a small part of the video. So I'm going to put the four aces into four different parts of the deck. And you can see that they go widely separated in the deck amongst all the other cards. And now I'm going to shuffle those cards back into the deck. And even though it looks like I'm shuffling, what I'm actually doing is stacking the deck, which means I'm secretly rearranging the cards so that when I deal, I will receive the four aces in a five-handed game of poker. So I'll deal out a five-handed game of cards. And because the shuffles were crooked, of course, the deals can be fair. And hopefully on this five-handed game, I should have received the four aces. And of course, my fifth card happens to be the King of Hearts, but it doesn't really matter what my fifth card is because I've got all four aces. Now, the suggestions again were to make it so that many cards would be aces. I would have two aces or five aces or the whole deck would be aces or what have you. And the problem with this suggestion is that if the whole deck turned out to be aces, well, this would kind of undermine how impressive it was that I just dealt myself the aces. Uh, but if instead of the whole deck being aces, the whole deck were, say, kings of hearts, then it would be just as impressive that I dealt myself all four aces. Now the next most popular type of comment came from a different type of card game. Imagine this guy playing Yu-Gi-Oh. He's gonna summon Exodia in his first turn. Don't let this man play Yu-Gi-Oh. He would always summon Exodia. Level 11. I have now all five Exodia pieces and three God cards. Level 11. And now, as you can see, I've dealt myself five aces, a first edition Charizard, a Honus Wagner 1909 to 11, a Blue Eyes White Dragon, and a green card. So instead of this normal deck of cards here, we're going to need a deck of Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Now, Yu-Gi-Oh is a Japanese trading card game that is based off of a fictional card game played within the story of the Yu-Gi-Oh manga and anime. If you have no idea what that meant, Basically, there was a series of books and a TV show in which the characters would play a card game, and so they made the game for real people to play. Yu-Gi-Oh! is just a small, niche little game that has sold, oh, I don't know, 35 billion cards? It's a pretty big deal, and it's a game I played when I was younger, although I was never quite as into it as I was with other activities with cards. Now, the Yu-Gi-Oh! comments that I kept getting over and over again had to do with a set of cards called Exodia. Exodia is a set of five cards, one card is the left leg, another card is the right leg, and then the left arm and the right arm, and last but not least, the head. And if you can assemble all five pieces, you create the ancient god Exodia or something like that. Now, what's so special about Exodia is if you draw all five pieces of this card, all five pieces of Exodia, you automatically win the game. It's a little bit like a royal flush in poker, except in poker there are four different royal flushes and you could get any one of them in spades, diamonds, clubs, or hearts, whereas there's only one set of Exodia in your deck. And if you can draw all five of those cards, you win immediately, no questions asked. The card I pulled. 
is Exodia, the Forbidden One. Ah, uh, what the? I've assembled all the five needed cards. So, naturally, this raises the question. Can I indeed locate all five pieces of Exodia from this deck of Yu-Gi-Oh cards? Well, let's find out. I believe the first piece of Exodia, the Forbidden One, is about halfway down. Should be about here. Yep, that is the left leg. For this next piece, I'm going to give these cards a few cuts like so, and I should be able to locate the right leg. There's the right leg. I'll give the cards a few cuts like this on the table to locate the left arm. You'll see this next card come spinning out of the middle of the deck. That should be the right arm. And there's just one piece remaining, the head. So I'm gonna give these cards a shuffle like this. And while the cards are shuffled together, I will give them a cut and you will see one card spin out of the middle of the deck. And with any luck, that should be the head of Exodia. The Forbidden One. Gosh, if finding a Royal Flush was nerdy, this is like 50,000 times as nerdy. I'm finding Yu-Gi-Oh cards. It's like 4.37 a.m. What am I doing with my life? I need to reevaluate my choices. But there's a problem with what I just did, which is that in Yu-Gi-Oh, you're not allowed to go shuffling through the cards, taking out whichever ones you want. No, you just have to draw the top five cards of your deck. And that happens after your opponent shuffles your cards, which means your cards are just in a random order. So presumably, if my opponent shuffled my deck thoroughly, that would mean the five pieces, the left leg and the right leg and the left arm and the right arm and the head of Exodia would be in five different spots in the deck. So I'm going to put these cards into five different positions. That's one, that's two, that's three, four, and five. So the five pieces of Exodia go widely separated in different parts of the deck. And this is the order of cards that I'd get from my opponent, which means to start out the duel, I would simply have to draw the top five cards of my deck. And if I've done my job correctly, you'll notice that there are no pieces of Exodia in the deck because I have drawn the right arm and the left arm, and the right leg, and the left leg, and the head of Exodia. That's all five pieces of the Forbidden One. Now for any Yu-Gi-Oh aficionados out there, I figure I should find some of the other cards I commonly get asked about. So, with any luck, that should be one Blue Eyes White Dragon, that should be two Blue Eyes White Dragons, and that should be all three Blue Eyes White Dragons. Now there's another set of three cards that I commonly get asked about. So I'm going to try to transform these three cards into those. You'll see those Blue Eyes White Dragons transform into Obelisk the Tormentor, the Winged Dragon of Ra, and Slifer the Sky Dragon, the three Egyptian God cards. This was actually really fun to put this Yu-Gi-Oh sequence together because I was quite into the game when I was much younger. And so to find all the cards that people asked for in the comments, I had to go through all of my old Yu-Gi-Oh card collections. And it was a really lovely trip down memory lane. So this was super fun to do. Maybe I'll do a little more in the future. Now, if you like this kind of video, I'd love to hear some suggestions for magic tricks to do in the future. Just put your wacky ideas in the comment section of this video or wherever else, and I'll take a look at them and see if I can figure out ways of doing those tricks just like I did with these. Now, the other type of comment I keep getting is that I look like Michael Reeves. At a glance, you look like Michael Reeves. You look like Michael Reeves. Michael Reeves, but with less tasers and profanity. Now, I don't know if I quite see the resemblance, but apparently some people do. Now, I actually didn't know who Michael Reeves was until I started seeing these comments, and then I went and looked him up and watched all his videos, and he's absolutely hilarious. He just builds these really ridiculous robots. Now, one type of video he did is he went through the comments on his videos, or maybe it was his Twitter, I don't quite remember, but he found comments that suggested robot ideas for him to build. And then he built those robots, or at least a few of them, that were especially funny. And I just thought this was a really hilarious concept, and I noticed that I was getting lots of suggestions for magic tricks that I should do. So I figured, hey, maybe I should go through all the comments on my videos and try to do some of the magic tricks that people suggest to me in the spirit of Michael Reeves. In fact, Michael Reeves just released a video the other day. It's absolutely hilarious. And if you haven't seen it, you definitely should. I'll put a link in the description. I also got a bunch of comments suggesting that I try to make uh, girlfriends appear. There's a novel idea. Level 11 is to steal your girls. <laughs> okay, that's pretty good. This guy steals your girlfriend. What do you do? I wonder if he can pull myself a girlfriend out of the deck. Okay, the syntax there really doesn't work. I wonder if he can pull myself. I wonder if he can pull himself 
a girlfriend out of that deck. I think that's what he meant to say. Level 11, deals himself a woman. All right, well, we've all been in quarantine for quite a while. We've all been isolated. You know, the dating scene is tough, but luckily with my magic abilities, just like these commenters have suggested, I can make women appear just out of a deck of cards. And I'm not talking about the four queens. I'm talking about real live girlfriends. So on the count of three, I will give these cards a flick like this. And when I flick the cards, either a girlfriend will appear or this video will end. One, two, three. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you like this video, please give it a like. And if you want to see more, consider subscribing to the channel and following me on social media. If you're interested in taking private lessons, I teach magicians of all levels. Or if you want to book a show, you can contact me on my website. Links are in the description, along with the credits and the inspirations for this video. See you next time.